What up, beautiful creepsters and ghouls? This is Julia from Southeast Missouri, and you're listening to A Paranormal Chicks with Donna and Carrie, and this is Sinister Sightings. And I'm Carrie. And we are Paranormal Chicks. Sinister Sightings 129. And you just heard Julia. That production quality, though. I mean, hit a girl up. Deep, boop, 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 boop. <laughs> Will's like, uh. I know. Just kidding, Will. You are. The wicked's like, goodbye. No, life sustaining <laughs> for this podcast. Yes. <laughs> and it deserved the periods in the middle. <laughs> yes. Listen to me on 2.0. That'll go faster. <laughs> Well, if you want to introduce an episode with whatever production quality you can do, head on over to patreon.com slash the APC podcast. Okay, the first one. Hey, girls, I have a story to tell you and want your opinion. First off, I love your podcast and live videos and think you two are the best. You remind me of my sister and myself and we are always cracking up, laughing and telling stories too. Okay, picture it. I'm lying in bed and settling down for a long winter's nap. That's not what they said. Okay. Settling down to go to sleep where for two nights in a row, it looked like a man was standing right by my dresser by my bedroom door. I turned on my light to see if it was one of my family members playing a joke on me, but no one was there. I found out on the third day that a good friend of mine passed away suddenly, but wasn't found until that day and is believed to have passed away two days before. I haven't seen the man again in my room since he was found. He was a wonderful man and loved by many. I think it might have been him. What are your thoughts? I have other stories and experiences to tell you, but I'll tell them in another email if you want. Let me know your thoughts on this. Love you girls. And as always, creep it real and don't get scared. Love and hugs, Connie. I mean, stands to reason that it's him. Mm -hmm. The timeline is what's like, huh? Yeah, I think so. And you never saw it again. So yeah, he was like, okay waiting to be found, and then was found. But I think my question would be, like, how close were y'all? Like, do you think, like, you would be the one that he would come to? Right. Or did he go to multiple people? I don't know. I don't know how that works. Me either. But, yeah, I think that was him. And, yes, we want all the extra stories. Hello, ladies. I wrote to you all last week with a few stories about experiences that I had as a young child while living in the city with my parents and sister. Fast forward through my whole life to today, there are so many stories and experiences I've had. One of the stories is from when I was young and getting ready to move out of the apartment in the city. You may remember that the ghost of that apartment was a man who spent all of his money to build this three-family home for his whole family that was coming over from Italy. Well, my mom and dad were packing the apartment to move. Well, although the kitchen, we had a great little pantry space that held our fridge, shelving, and a small desk. My dad loved ginger ale, so my mom always bought it. The ginger ale had been kept on the top shelf of the pantry so that my sister and I could not get it. Well, as my mom was packing the pantry, she walked away to do whatever. Well, while she's out of the pantry, all the glass bottle ginger ale literally were falling off the top shelf and shattering onto the floor. My mom was annoyed because, well, hello, glass and ginger ale while packing. That is a nasty cleanup. My mom literally yelled, what the hell? And yelled at the man, hey, we're moving, not because we don't like it here, but because we need a bigger house and space for the family. She cleaned up the mess and told the old man, we have always loved it here and we'll miss him. After that, all activity settled down. Let's move to more recent times. About 14 years ago, I bought a house and was making renovations. The man who lived in the house before me wanted to retire there, but died unexpectedly. Well, I was there alone and doing work on the house. I had finished up and cleaned up for the night and went to bed. Now, I don't know if this was sleep paralysis or not. I fell asleep and I've never had an issue sleeping. Well, I woke up and was being held down in my bed and it was the man. I know that I could speak, but I couldn't move. I said to him, I love this house like you did, and I'm making it better, just like you did. It's mine now, and I will not disrespect what you did for upgrades. 
At that moment, he disappeared and never came back. I will say when I'm making changes or upgrades, I'll hear some extra bumps and bangs, but nothing to get crazy about. And from time to time, I do see my dog watching and looking around like she sees someone. I have more stories to share and we'll do so shortly. Until then, creep it real and don't get scared. Deneen. The first story, like, he wasn't ready for y'all to leave. He missed y'all already. I know. That's sweet. I mean, not sweet that you caused a freaking mess. I mean, there's other ways to express your emotions, (laughs) ma'am. Sir, whatever. (laughs) Ghostly apparition. (laughs) That's how I'm (laughs) going to... I'm going to start my emails. Ma'am, sir, ghostly apparition. (laughs) 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 Well, as soon as I said it, I was like, wait, it was a male ghost. (laughs) That is sweet, though. And, you know, you don't think about it, or I don't think about it, that if they are still in that house or whatever, and then they see you doing stuff, because I'd be pissed. I'd be like, "Um, why don't you like the island purple like I had it? Ma'am, sir, sir, ghostly ghostly apparition. apparition. (laughs) 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 Oh, shit. But, you know, like, it would. And so I love that you kind of learn from your mom. Just tell them that you appreciate the house. You appreciate them. You're not going to disrespect them. You know, you love the house like they did. Like, that was, both of them were wholesome. I mean, not something I would want to experience, but. No. Okay, this one is a haunted Christmas story. Hello, beautiful chicks. I'm Chris, and I've got kind of scary, kind of sweet Christmas ghost story for you. My mother died when I was a sophomore in high school. The first Christmas was hard. This happened a couple of weeks before Christmas. I was home alone waiting for my sister to get home from work. At a reasonable hour, I decided to go to bed because, of course, school had not been canceled yet. So I'm in my bed and I hear a knock at my door. Now, there are only two people who had that knock, my mom and my sister. So, of course, I think it's my sister needing help bringing in groceries or something. I get out of bed and open the door. Darkness. Okay, she didn't turn on the lights. Fine, whatever. Go into the living room, open the front door. Nothing. No prints, no car, nothing. When my sister finally made it home about an hour later, I had all the lights on and was still freaking out. I believe that my mom was doing what she always said she would do. She told me that she would come back and haunt me. Of course, she always told me this not being a bad thing. She was the ultimate guilt trips. <laughs> I have a ton more stories, both paranormal and true crime-ish. I'm already planning my next one to send in. Oh, but you'll have to wait until I move apartments because I'm not letting that shit into my home. I mean, what kind of knock they have? I mean, were they doing like shave and a haircut? Two bits. Literally, that's what I was thinking. Probably just like a little dainty knock. I don't know. Nothing like my freaking Hulk hand does. <laughs> Nothing just like, like my hand because I don't ever knock on your door. <laughs> no, I know. But yeah, you scared the shit out of me when you came in today. Not like I'm um, uh, strong. Like I just am heavy handed. <laughs> yes, you are. We know. <laughs> heavy handed and clumsy. Yes. Also, I just love. That's what she always said. She said she would haunt me. <laughs> <laughs> I know. She held up her end of the bargain. Mm-hmm. This one's titled, My Reminder That It's Okay. Hey ladies, I will start this story with a little back info. Growing up, my brother and I practically lived with our grandparents. We did all kinds of things with them. We would go home every now and then when we had to for school. But other than that, we were with them. My grandma passed away when I was in the sixth grade. By then, I had moved 30 minutes away from them with my mom. Also, hitting that older age, all kids want to spend time with their friends on the weekends. My grandpa was always there for me, though. He bought me my first car. Well, let's get real. If you ask anyone in my family, I was his princess. I was the firstborn granddaughter, and he made sure I had the world. Anything I needed, he made sure I was taken care of. After some years, he moved into a nursing home an hour and a half away from me. This home was closest to my uncle, who would make sure he was taken care of. He unfortunately passed away on my birthday of all days in 2018. My grandpa loved all things trains. After he had the house to himself, he turned one of his rooms into a train room. 
train clock, train lamp, and a huge model train that he worked on every day. He built mountains for the train to ride through, little towns, everything. That reminds me of Mr. Rogers. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. And Sheldon from Big Bang Theory, but I know that means nothing to you. Yeah, it doesn't. After he passed, all the grandkids and family took pieces of him. I got the train lamp, train clock, and a picture of my grandparents when they were younger, and a painting he painted for my grandma when they first got together. Oh. All of those things are hanging on my wall right above a bookshelf that his train lamp sits on. This clock has not worked in a long time. I could change the batteries, but honestly, it makes a train sound every hour, and I really don't want it to wake everyone up at night, so I was okay with just the memory of seeing it there. One day, stress was super high in my house. You know adult stress. Kids going crazy, and I was at the point of losing my mind. And then, out of nowhere, this clock starts shooting out train sounds. The whole house stopped and looked down the hall. I instantly had a calming feeling, and we all had a laugh after first being scared shitless. This happened a few weeks after our attic access was randomly opened one day, so you can imagine how freaked out we were. We were at first to hear a clock that didn't work start making noises. That attic story is for another time, though. Now, every time tensions get high or we're making big decisions about our household, that clock will randomly shoot out train sounds. I have learned that this is my grandpa telling me that it's going to be okay, and he's there helping us make all of our hard decisions. He was always a jokester, and this is his way of putting light in any tough situation. Creep it real and don't get scared. Sometimes freaky things are just loved ones telling you that it will be okay. Bye, y'all. Amanda. That's the third story we've had of somebody coming back to visit, and, you know, we're on three. Right? Aren't we on three? Yeah. Man. That's a theme today. You know I would have come out my fucking skin if I'd have heard a damn train horn. Oh my gosh. Uh Uh-uh. Like, literally, I would have leapt from my skin. I always wanted a clock with a certain chime. Anything cool. Like, one time, this is back when cordless phones were cool. They had this one that you could get, and it was, like, all pink. I think it was all pink. I know there was, like, pink, yellow, blue, and something else. I'm pretty sure the pink one, because I know. Imagine that. But Christina Aguilera had some songs on there, and you can pre-program that to be the ringtone. I thought I was hot shit. That's when I was in high school. Well, yeah, high school, like freshman year. The next one is called The Ghost Boy That Followed Us Home. Hello, my lovely paranormal chicas. My children and I love hearing your sinister sightings. We love laughing with you girls. You girls have the best laugh. The kids wanted me to send in our story, and I wanted to send in a dream that just happened to me. So here we go. I just drifted off to sleep when I felt like I was not alone in my dark room. I knew something was in my room. Then I saw a shape of a person on my ceiling. Then I heard a loud buzzing. I yelled in my dream Jesus' name and that I was covered in the blood of Jesus and couldn't be harmed. I screamed, get out of my house so loud that I felt my whole house shake from my rage of having this intruder. I get mad instead of feel fear when spooky shit happens to me. Then the buzzing became louder. Then I heard a rattlesnake, and I could see it forming beside my bed. I yelled for Archangel Michael to protect me. Then everything stopped, and I woke up. I never felt scared or fear during this whole incident. I feel I have a very strong connection to the Archangels. I pray a lot, and they protect and heal me and my family. The next story. We don't regularly have ghosts and spirits in our house, but there have been some that pass through. My kids, three girls, 6, 8, 10, and one boy, 12, and I go walking in cemeteries all the time. So you would think we would have something follow us home from there, but nope. It happened when we walked down the paved trail one day. We didn't feel anything at the time, but that night, one of my daughters and my husband kept hearing my son's guitar. It was in a closed closet. They told themselves it was just the cats and went back to sleep. The next night, my youngest daughter came and slept with me and made my husband go sleep in my daughter's bedroom bunk bed. In the middle of the night, he heard someone get into the top bunk and he asked, who's up there? And they stopped moving. He got up to check and no one was up there. He went back to sleep. 
The third and final night, it was like 1 a.m., and I heard footsteps in the kitchen coming towards my room. I was thinking, great, now it's my turn. Then in walks my youngest daughter. Can I sleep with you? Relieved, I said yes, and as she's about to get into my bed, the fan unplugs. We look at each other and freeze. After a moment, I say, oh, you just bumped it. Go connect it. Better the ghost gets her than me. I know, I'm not the best mom. She hesitated. Then I turned the lights on on my phone. She did it and we went to sleep. The next day, I decided I was going to smudge the house and you can tell that the spirit wasn't there anymore. I told the kids it was just a little boy. I had a strong feeling it was. And he saw us walking down the trail and followed us home because he wanted to play with them. But he's gone now. They said they're not going down that trail anymore because they didn't want him to follow them home again. And we haven't gone since. Well, that's our story, gals. Hope you like it. Love you girls so much. We look forward to every Thursday. Besitos, Christina. I don't want a little boy. I don't want an old man. I don't want any kind of ghost following me home. Don't care how. You don't want it now, Veruca Salt. (laughs) Right, basically. No, I totally get that, though. That sounds... Also, your kids are very intuitive. Uh Uh-huh. And a whole hell of a lot braver than me. Oh, my gosh, yes. This one is titled... Ghost with a flair for pyro. Happy Yule, ladies, and happy holidays for everyone that observes any other holidays this season. We're in December, by the way, y'all. I'm currently taking a break from homework and turned on the latest episode, 144. Selena is good, but it's not the greatest. The movie was much, much better. I think this person is saying that about me hooking up with that guy and was like, oh, Selena's on Netflix. Yeah, or um, I think we talked about you had like watched like just one episode or something. I haven't watched any. Oh, then not that. <laughs> After all of that, I never watched it. That's right. Anyways, on to the real reason I'm avoiding all of my homework, besides the fact that I have ADHD. So I recently just moved into a house with a couple of roommates. I know absolutely nothing of the house, when it was built, etc., But seeing as I'm superstitious as fuck, I was going through and cleansing the house, mainly for my own peace of mind. Well, with the super techie new alarm system my roommates had installed before I moved in, it detects any small type of disturbance, aka me smoking the house out with my cleansing concoction. So I'm going through, doing my thing, talking to myself, and I hear a beep. It's the alarm system. Smoke level in house detected. I'm just like, damn it, I'm almost done. So I sprint back to the garage to grab the broom to shut the alarm off on the ceiling. Vertically challenged, holla. And then the alarm system trips all of the other alarms and they all start yelling at the same time. My roommate was laughing his ass off as I'm running through the house opening all the windows while not putting out the smudging stick. Just making things worse, trying to eliminate the smoke. I finally realized the smudge stick was in my hand and still smoking, and I just yelled, fucking dumbass, out loud to myself, which made my roommate collapse of laughter. So I put the smudge stick out, we get the alarms to stop, and air the house out. And now the running joke is that we have a ghost that likes to mess with me and now trips all of the alarms. Good job. No one was hurt, I didn't burn the house down this time, and now I'm looking for other cleansing methods seeing as I can't be trusted with fire and smoke. And now, onto one of my many paranormal experiences. My abuelo passed away around when I was 11. I had a dream about him before I knew he had passed away. In my dream, we were in a funeral parlor, everyone all somber and dressed up, talking quietly amongst each other. So I decided to walk around because I really didn't know what was going on. I walked slowly over to the viewing room. It was all set up nice and pretty with flowers and chairs everywhere. No one was in there. I could see the coffin from the doorway. So me being the curious child I was, walked up to the coffin. It was my grandpa, dressed in a blue suit, his hands on his chest, looking like he was sleeping. I just stared at him, trying to comprehend what I was seeing. I put my hands on the side of the coffin, looking in at him, and then he sat straight up. He grabbed my arm and looked at me and told me to tell my abuela that he'll be okay. 
I was terrified and I forced myself to wake up. I was confused, but just brushed it off as a nightmare and continued on about my normal school day. Went to school and then got called to the office. My mom called and left a message with the office secretary telling me to walk to my abuela's after school. Her house was literally across the street from my school. So I get there after school, not thinking anything of it, and my entire family was there. My tias and my tias, my cousins, and I was just like, what? This is weird. My abuela pulled all of the grandkids into a back room and told us that the abuelo had passed away that morning. My cousin started crying. I just stared at her. She was joking, right? Like they were playing a cruel joke on us? Well, she wasn't. Fast forward to the visitation. We walked into the funeral parlor. It was the parlor from my dream, the same exact one. I immediately felt sick to my stomach. I still hadn't told anyone about my nightmare. My family is extremely Catholic, and I thought they were going to flip like they did when I left the church, but that's another story. I followed my parents around for a bit, going through the cocktail hour thing and avoiding the room where the visitation was going to be held. I finally talked myself into going to see my abuelo. I walked over to the visitation area and just stood at the doorway. It was set up exactly like my dream, from the chair arrangements to the flowers on the casket. I started panicking. It took what seemed like three hours for me to move into the actual room from the doorway, and I slowly made my way to the casket. I stopped at the edge, put my hands on the side like I did in my dream, and peered over. And there he was, in the same blue suit, with his hands on his chest, looking like he was sleeping. I instantly started crying, full-on panic and ugly cry. My dad had to come pick me up and carry me out of the room. My abuelo came to me and told me he was okay before I even knew he was gone. I told my abuela at the funeral that he's okay and that he's in a better place and not in pain anymore, and she just nodded and said, I hope so. I never told anyone in my family about my dream. Most of them, including my dad and my abuela, are devout Catholics still to this day, and I don't think they would believe me. And if they did, who knows where they would send me. Anyways, I hope this is amusing. Y'all can use my real name. Y'all are the best. I guess I'll go finish my homework. Much love, Britt. That has to be so weird to be, you know, like, like, okay, it was a bad dream, And then, you know, go halfway through your day and then be hit with it wasn't a dream. It was a premonition. And literally everything else is the same. Mm -hmm. Oh, it would have taken someone pushing me into that doorway to like pushing me from the doorway to make it in because I would have been like mouth open, frozen in place. Oh, gosh, I'm so sorry. But that is sweet that he came and told you and you know, you were able to say your goodbye then. I mean, he scared the shit out of you in your dream, but, you know. Yeah, not only were you terrified in your dream, you had to, like, literally live that terrifying dream. Mm -hmm. See, and I'm a teller, so are you. Mm -hmm. So, like, we would not have been able to keep our mouths shut. No. When she said, like, when your grandma was like, I hope so, I'd have been like, no, 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 no. Like, he is. Like, he told me. Like, this happened. Go finish your homework. (laughs) Don't finish it. Just kidding. Definitely finish it, but... I mean, you've already done it, Brett. We know this. You're talking to the queens of procrastination. Mm Mm-hmm. Hey, girlies. It's Kaylee. I recently sent in a story about my Ouija board story on Halloween, and I had mentioned I had other paranormal experiences, so I'm deciding to share another one. This was the same rental house we lived in that was haunted, and it was a few days after my 18th birthday. You know those big number balloons you can get? Well, I keep them until they die out. So I had those in front of my bed, and my walk-in closet door is just slightly to the right of that. Because I know an open closet door is scary at night, I always make sure to close it before going to bed. In the middle of the night, I wake up to a heavy pressure on my chest and hearing a ringing slash TV static sound so loud in my ears. I try to move, and I can't. I'm stuck to my bed, flat on my back. I try to move a finger, a toe, nothing. And since I knew about sleep paralysis, I knew this is exactly what was happening. I am beyond terrified. 
I try to talk and tell whatever it was to go away and nothing comes out. I can't even move my lips. The only thing I can move is my eyeballs. You know how I mentioned the 18 number balloons in the front of my bed? Well, I see them start to shake violently. I can't hear them move over the static sound ringing in my ears, but I see them shaking and it was aggressive. Then I notice my closet door slowly opening. I see the handle turning and everything. At this point, I'm freaking out, just wanting it to stop. The closet door is fully open now, and I see a dark figure slowly walk out the closet. This figure I still remember to this day at age 21 because it scared me so bad. It was almost as tall as the door frame and had long, skinny fingers gripping onto the side of the door frame and had a long, droopy face and a wide mouth filled with rows of nasty teeth. Typing this out makes me want to cry. It just stood there staring at me. While this is happening, my balloons are still shaking and I hear the static in my ears. I felt like my soul was about to be taken. I've never experienced such fear in my life. I look away and try to stare at my feet to move a big toe, a finger, something, just to make it stop. I can finally move my toe, then my foot, then everything gets dizzy and I start seeing stars. I take a look back at my closet. The figure was still there. I pass out. And I don't wake up until the next morning, laying on my stomach. I sit up as fast as I can and look at my closet door, wondering if it was real or just a nightmare. My closet door was open. This entity was definitely real, and the things I experienced were legit because, like I said, I woke up and my closet door was wide open. When I went to bed, it was shut. I was so glad I had school that day, so I get the fuck out of there. I love you, Donna and Carrie. I'm very, and I mean very, behind on episodes because I'm binge listening all the way from the beginning to catch up. Thank you for reading my story. Oh my gosh. That, like, I could just picture the... Oh. Like of the door and the fingers, like oh. around uh-huh. the door. You did that too good. Mm-mm. My fingers. Yeah, yeah, they could. Y'all couldn't see me, but I was doing the fingers. <laughs> like, still am. <laughs> well, and again, you wake up and you're like, "Oh, that was a bad dream." But then you look over and your closet door is open. So you're like, "Nope, that was real." Yeah. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. No. 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 Don't want that. And the static sounds, no, too much. The last one is called My Creepy Haunted Apartment. Hello, ladies. I'm Sarah. I'm 21, and I'm from India. Before I start my story, I just want to say that your podcast has been my favorite pastime. I moved to the countryside, and I don't have internet here, so every time I get the chance, I download 10 Sinister Sightings episodes and listen to them all the time. Y'all make me laugh so much and make everything seem less lonely. I love your ambient stories. Also, if you need a new cover or some art stuff, I'd be more than happy to make some art for you. Okay, on to my story. I'm not the best writer, so I hope this makes sense. I've always been sensitive to spirits and the paranormal, seeing spirits and visions and things, but not so much now. For example, growing up, I used to see a boy peeking out from my door all the time. I found out later that it was a child that was aborted by someone in my family a few months before he was born. This was kept a secret because of the situation and only a few people knew about it. When I asked my mom about it, she freaked out and kept asking me how I found out. I was 10 at the time and things like that kept happening. When my mom was single, she, my sister and I moved into an apartment she bought when I was in the eighth grade. And in the beginning, everything was fine. We lived on the third floor, and from the balcony in my room, you could see a small coconut grove that was behind my apartment. One night, I get out of the shower in my towel, I go to the balcony to get some clothes to wear, and I look down into the coconut grove, and I could see a man looking straight into our balcony, and I couldn't see his feet. I couldn't believe my eyes, so I stayed there staring straight at the man while calling out for my mom. When she came, I looked away for a second, and he wasn't there. No one believed me after that, obviously. But then, one day, our new help came to live with us, and the first night she slept in our house, she wakes everyone up at 3 a.m. screaming that some man tried to touch her. 
Slowly over time, the atmosphere in our house got very gloomy, so we never spend too much time in our own house. My sister and I would either be at school or our relatives' or friends' houses. My mom at work and our help would constantly go visit her sister, and she left us to be somewhere else a few months later. So many weird things happened in the five years we lived there. Like the walls grew black mold in less than a week. Random feces would show up in the balcony of my bedroom. Obviously, it wasn't any one of us that shat there. My sister would randomly get super violent and beat me up and not remember anything after her episodes. I think she got possessed or something because the guy my mom's married to now, who is a pretty big guy, had to sit on top of her just because of the sheer strength she'd get during these episodes. She punched him so hard that he had a huge bruise and he doesn't bruise easy. Another time, my little cousin's sister came to visit us one day and they asked my mom who the man in our balcony was. There was no one there. As for me, this entity would follow me at a distance at all times, would give me nightmares, and it affected my mental health. It tormented me for a long time. The drawings I made would be so disturbing my mom had to burn them. This was all built up to the most terrifying two weeks in that house. There was a crazy midnight attack. My sister tried to take her own life. I was put into a trance and did some weird psychedelic astral projection thingy to talk to the entity. A lot of different spiritual people diagnosed in our house, which is a whole nother story I'll send in soon. Sorry if this was long or confusing. Thank you for being awesome. I wish we had Ambien in India. And remember, creep it real and don't get scared. Okay, first off, Sarah, y'all don't have Ambien in India? There's tons of drugs that we don't have that they have. Yeah, I know. Our FDA lets all kinds of shit go in True. medicine that other countries doesn't let happen. True. So they're like, um, fuck that. Y'all keep that. Yeah. But I mean, they may want their titties flapping in the wind. <laughs> oh my gosh. How fucking scary is that? And of course, like on all scary movies, you know, you call, you call, you call, and they're about to come and you, of course, are going to look when you hear a sound coming in your room or whatever. And of course, then the entity's gone. You know, mm-hmm. and it's like, no, it was right here. I swear. Like, oh, frustrating. Hopefully y'all are safe now and everything, but we would obviously want to hear all all the stories you have, the continuation of this, everything. All I know to say is that sounds scary AF. Yes. Thank y'all so much for sending in all these stories. If you want your story read, send it over to aparanormalchicks at gmail.com. And remember, creep it real and and don't don't get scared. scared.